This video aims to provide an introduction to pivot table. A pivot table is a powerful tool to calculate, summarize, and analyze data that lets us see comparisons, patterns, and trends in our data. We can use it to group, sort, count, total, or average data stored in a table. It can rearrange data by making columns into rows and rows into columns. For example, I have this table that contains records of transactions of a business that sells fruits and vegetables. In the first record, potato, which is a vegetable, was sold for 1000 on January 3, 2021. Then here are other records until April 23, 2021. This serves as the source table of our pivot tables. At this point, let's use the Pivot Table tool in Google Sheets to answer important business questions. To begin, highlight the data range. For this example, that is from A3 to E13. Go to the Data tab and select Pivot Table. This pop-up window appears. Verify the data range. If incorrect or you want to change, simply click the Select Data Range icon to edit. We can insert the pivot table to a new sheet or an existing sheet. Let's first use the existing sheet. Specify from what cell the table will appear. We can either type in or use the select data range icon. Suppose you want it to appear from cell G3. Click OK, then Create. The Pivot Table Editor sidebar appears on the right side of the screen and a guide to the Pivot Table automatically appeared in the worksheet. The Editor sidebar is the place where we can specify what will appear in the Row, Columns, and Values area in the worksheet. If we click the Add button, we see a menu of column names in our Source Table, which are Transaction, Item, Category, Sales, and Date. We can use the Filters option if we need to display selected things from the created pivot table. For example, the business would like to know how much is the total sales for each item. Click the Add button beside Rows option, then select Item. Notice that the items appeared as rows in the table. Unlike the Source table, the ones in the pivot table do not have duplicates. Click the Add button beside the Values option, select Sales. As we can see, the created pivot table shows how much is the total sales for each item. The reason why Apple has 4,000 is because the source table has two transactions which apples were bought. One instance was sold for 3,000 and the other one was sold for 1,000. In this example, each item served as a label for the sum of labels. Therefore, the name of each item becomes the row labels. Alternatively, we can also present the sum of sales in columns. We can make the item name as column labels. Here's how. Highlight the data range, go to the data tab, and select the pivot table. Verify the data range if correct. Insert the pivot table to the existing sheet. Click the select data range icon and click the cell where we want to put the pivot table. Let's say starting in cell G10. Click OK and Create. In the Pivot Table Editor sidebar that appears, click the Add button next to Columns. Choose Items. Next to Values, click the Add button and select Sales. Let's look at the output. As we can see, we have the item names as column labels, and the sum of sales of each item is at the bottom. These two tables provide the same information. They present the sum of sales of each item sold. Both of these pivot tables are correct as they can answer our question, which is how much is the total sales for each item? It depends on our preference how we would like to display our data in the pivot table, either using row labels or column labels. Let's have another example. Let's say the business would like to know how much is the total sales for each category. We start the process by highlighting the data range then go to the Data tab and select Pivot Table. In this pop-up window, verify the data reach. This time, let's insert it to New Sheet. A new worksheet appears. Double-click the tab to rename. As we can see, the guide appears on the worksheet. 
Next to the Rows option, click the Add button and choose Category. At the side of Values option, click the Add button and choose Sales. As we can see in the output, we have the category as row labels and the sum of sales appears beside them. Going back to our question, which is how much is the total sales for each category, we can easily say that it is 14,000 for fruit and 11,000 for vegetable. If we would like to determine what are the items that were sold for each category, then we can add another layer in rows option. Here's how. Click any part of the pivot table. So the pivot table editor reappears. Next to the rows option, click the add button and choose item from the menu. As we can see in the sidebar, the rows are category and below it is item. If we look at the output, we can see the category is the first column and item is next to it. We can now say that apple and mango, which are categorized as fruits, were sold and beside them shows their respective sum of sales. We can also see the total of the fruit category. Data for vegetables is also automatically generated. Grand total of the values was also computed. We have the ability to collapse and expand the data. Let's have our final example in this video. Let's say the business would like to know how much is the total sales for each item in the given month. Let's highlight the data range. Go to the data tab and choose pivot table. We will insert the output to another sheet. Rename the tab. As we can see, the guide appears on the worksheet and the pivot table editor sidebar appears. For the rows, let's add item. At the side of columns, Click the Add button and choose Date. Let's refine the column labels. If you only want to use the month in the complete date data set, we can right-click any of the dates, choose Create Pivot Data Group, and select Month. Now we can only see month names from January to April. Let's continue adding the values to the pivot table. Next to the Values option, click the Add button and choose Sales from the menu. In the output, we can see the sales for each item in every month, like Apple was sold for the month of March. For Mango item, it was sold in the months of January, February, and April. We can say that based on the column grand totals, the month of April has the highest sales, which is 10,000. We can also see on the row grand totals, Mango has the highest sales. From this output, suppose the business would like to know what item is sold most in each month. Instead of getting the sum of sales of each item, let us count how many instances of sales that took place. Click the Summarize by drop-down arrow and choose Count. As we can see, the sales were replaced by the number of times each item was sold. For example, 2 appears for the Apple item in the month of March. Looking at the source table, Apple was bought twice in the said month. We counted the number of sales for that item. Moreover, from this output, we can also say that mango and potato tied in the month of January, mango and squash tied in the month of February, and mango is the most sold in the month of April. Let's put into use the filters option. Suppose the business just wants to see what item is sold most for the month of April. In the Pivot Table Editor, go to the Filters option. Click the Add button beside it. Choose Date. Click the Status drop-down menu. Currently, it is filtered by value. Let's use Filter by Condition. Choose Date is After. Then look for an exact date. Type in March 31, 2021. This means only the dates greater than the specified date are expected to appear in the pivot table. Here's the output. We see that it only displays the sold item in the month of April, and the most sold is Mango. We come to the end of this video lesson. I hope I have given some light to your knowledge about pivot tables in Google Sheets. Thank you for your time.